ஹாய் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் குட் ஈவினிங் ஒன் செகண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு மை சேனல் முகாம்பிகா நர்சிங் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் யார் வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸிங் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃபோர் இஎஸ்ஐசி எக்ஸாம் ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் ஆல்சோ ஆர்ஆர்பி எக்ஸாம் ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் இஎஸ்ஐசி எக்ஸாம் இஸ் ஆன் செவன்த் ஜூலை தட் இஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் மந்த் செவன் டுடே வி கேன் சி கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் ரெஸ்பிரேட்டரி சிஸ்டம் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் எ ரிமூவல் ஆஃப் தி என்டையர் லங் இஸ் கோல்டு ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆப்ஷன் ஏ லோபக்டமி ஆப்ஷன் பி நியூமோனக்டமி ஆப்ஷன் சி செக்மெண்டல் ரிசக்ஷன் ஆப்ஷன் டி வெஜ் ரிசக்ஷன் எ ரிமூவல் ஆஃப் என்டையர் லங் இஸ் நான் எஸ் நியூமோனக்டமி ஆப்ஷன் பி இஸ் தி கரெக்ட் ஆன்சர் மோன்ட் தி நெக்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் எ டிசீஸ் கண்டிஷன் கேரக்டரைஸ் பை எக்ஸசிவ் மியூக்கஸ் கலெக்ஷன் வித் கொலாப்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஆல்வியோலேஸ் கோல்டு ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆப்ஷன் ஏ ப்ரோங்கியல் ஆஸ்மா ஆப்ஷன் பி அத்லட்டாசிஸ் ஆப்ஷன் சி ப்ரோங்கைட்டிஸ் ஆப்ஷன் டி ப்ரோங்கியட்டாசிஸ் கொஸ்டின் எக்ஸசிவ் மியூக்கஸ் கலெக்ஷன் வித் கொலாப்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஆல்வியோலே ஓர் வித் கொலாப்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி லங் இஸ் நான் எஸ் அத்லட்டாசிஸ் ஆப்ஷன் பி வில் கம் கரெக்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆப்ஷன் ப்ரோங்கியல் ஆஸ்மா இட் இஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி ப்ரோங்கியல் ஏர்வே டிசார்டர் வித் irreversible bronchospasm bronchitis means inflammation of the bronchi bronchiostasis means chronic irreversible abnormal condition of the bronchi our question is collapse of the lung is atelectasis and the next question which lobe is most commonly affected in children with pulmonary atelectasis options option a right upper lobe option b right lower lobe option c left upper lobe option d left lower lobe in children with pulmonary atelectasis affect most commonly a right upper lobe option a is the correct answer and the next question capnography is the measurement of options option a bicarbonate concentration option b hydrogen ion concentration option c carbon dioxide concentration and option d all of this capnography means is the measurement of carbon dioxide concentration option c is the correct answer capnography measures the concentration of carbon dioxide in both inhaled and exhaled air move on to the next question congenital obstruction of posterior nares at the entrance to the nasopharynx is called options option a tracheoesophageal atresia option b esophageal atresia option c tracheoesophageal fistula option d coronal atresia yet the question congenital obstruction congenital means by birth itself there is an obstruction or blockage in the posterior nares posterior part of the nares at the entrance or at the beginning part of the nasopharynx is called a coronal atresia coronal atresia is a congenital occlusion of the passage between nose and pharynx by bony structure okay bony structure or any membranous obstruction not only bony structure or membranous obstruction there may be congenital obstruction between the nose and pharynx that is nasopharynx is known as coronal atresia and the next question a nurse reposition a client who is diagnosed with emphysema to facilitate breathing which position is most accurate for this client options option a low fowler's position option b semi fowler's position option c orthopnic position option d supine position and here the question diagnosis of the patient is emphysema to facilitate breathing for breathing which position is most accurate okay among this option orthopnic position for breathing difficulty we can give upright orthopneic position or upright position so the patient can able to breathe easily orthopneic position with lean forward that is also good for breathing okay option c is the correct answer and the next question a client has experienced pulmonary embolism the nurse should assess for which commonly reported symptom options option a sudden chills and fever option b hot flushed feelings option c chest pain that occurs suddenly option d all of this here in this question patient diagnosis is pulmonary embolism and the nurse is assessing the 
patient okay which is the most commonly reported symptom that the patient is expressing okay so the correct answer is option c chest pain that occurs suddenly here in this pulmonary embolism means there is a formation of thrombus thrombus or blood clot most commonly in deep vein which travels to the right side of the heart and get lodged or accumulated in the branches of the pulmonary artery okay that cause pulmonary embolism and the signs and symptoms usually for a patient with pulmonary embolism are restlessness blood tinge sputum chest pain chest pain is the most common symptom so the patient may report chest pain i feel chest pain okay so that is our answer and also other symptoms like crackles cyanosis distended neck vein dyspnea this all signs of hypotension then shallow respiration tachypnea tachycardia uh, the signs and symptoms of pulmonary embolism and the next question a nurse is suctioning a fluid from a client via a tracheostomy tube when suctioning the nurse must limit the suctioning time to a maximum of options option a 1 minute option b 5 second option c 10 second option d 30 second and here the question is a nurse is doing tracheostomy suctioning okay the nurse must limit the suctioning time to maximum of 10 second because there may be chances of hypoxemia hypoxemia means decrease oxygen in the blood so hypoxemia can be caused by prolonged suctioning so this may can cause bradycardia so the nurse should limit suction in time up to 10 second and also pre oxygenate the client okay that means before doing suction the nurse should give oxygen to the patient on to the next question a nurse is caring for a client after a bronchoscopy and biopsy which of the following signs if noted in the client should be reported immediately to the physician options option a dry cough option b hematuria option c bronchospasm option d blood streak sputum here in this question a nurse is caring for a client after bronchoscopy and biopsy here nurse is caring after care of bronchoscopy bronchoscopy is a diagnostic procedure is usually visualizing the tracheobronchial tree so after care of this bronchoscopy and biopsy is doing by a nurse which of the following signs and symptoms among this option which signs and symptoms should be noted by the nurse and it should be reported immediately to the physician here the complications of this procedure bronchoscopy includes cyanosis dyspnea strider bronchospasm hemoptysis hypotension tachycardia and dysarrhythmia here in our question bronchospasm is there so after bronchoscopy if the patient reported or if the patient ex feel bronchospasm means that we have to inform to the doctor immediately And first option dry cough dry cough may experience the patient after the procedure and also hematuria will not come in this case and blood streak sputum this may experience by the patient few hours after or several hours after the procedure here correct answer is bronchospasm option c and the next question an emergency department nurse is assessing a client who has sustained blood blunt injuries to the chest wall which of the signs would indicate the presence of a pneumothorax in the client in this client option option a a low respiratory rate option b diminished birth sounds option c the presence of barrel chest option d all of this here in this question in an emergency department a nurse is caring for a client with blunt chest injury blunt blunt chest injury means there is a forced injuries to the chest wall okay so which signs and symptoms indicate there is a presence of pneumothorax in the chest, in the client pneumothorax means presence of air in the chest wall okay thoracic cavity that is known as pneumothorax the basic symptom of this closed chest injury or blunt injury of the chest wall is shortness of the birth and chest pain 
Because of this, there may be diminished birth sound occurs to the patient. Okay, birth sound will be diminished or decreased. And the patient may experience tachypnea, cyanosis and uh, emphysema may also occur for this case. On to the next question. Terbutalin is prescribed for a patient with bronchitis. This medication should be used with caution while the patient is having the history of which disease? Options. Option A. Hypothyroidism. Option B. Diabetes mellitus. Option C. Polycystic disease. Option D. All of this. Here this terbutalin is an example of bronchodilators. Terbutalin is prescribed for a patient with bronchitis. Bronchitis means inflammation of the bronchi. Okay. So this terbutalin should be given with caution or with precaution for a patient with diabetes mellitus. Option B is the correct answer. And also this terbutalin is not given for a patient with impaired cardiac function, then hyperthyroidism, history of seizure disorder and also this diabetes mellitus. Friends, here in this video we discuss questions from respiratory system. Surely these questions will be helpful for your exam preparation. If it is useful for your studies, please share my videos to your friend circle.